Our next guest says bank charts are pointing to some trouble ahead. Let's go off the charts with Chris Verone of Certigas, a Baird company. Chris, what do you see? Hey, Melissa. Well, I think when we consider the last week, you know, we're a week removed from what was originally viewed as a pretty risk on Powell speech. But in the aftermath of that, you know, most security prices are either back to or below where they were then. And I think when you put this in context of the banks in particular, which have acted very poor since then, and the Blackstone news, it's a reminder that when liquidity was so ample for so long, it seeps into every nook and cranny of the market. We saw that with British LDI earlier this year, Blackstone today. I think the bank stocks are suggestive that we haven't seen the end of this trouble. So what we did here is we brought along a couple pictures. I'll just start with the simple observation. On the rally off the October low, just note, banks never took out their 200-day. S&P did, banks didn't. Divergence number one. Yesterday, Negative two standard deviation move on the downside for banks. Any time a group, particularly one that's below the 200-day, makes a negative two standard deviation move, you have to open your eyes. Um, it tends to give you some type of a message. And when you look at some of our other uh, charts here, I think in particular, um, you made a 20-day low on the KBW Bank Index yesterday. So made a one-month low. When you're in a downtrend, when you're below the 200-day and you're making one-month lows, if you're long, you have to exercise the sell discipline. It's a message to get away, get to the sidelines. One month lows in downtrends are the recipe for some more problems. Now, we also like to think about banks relative. And I'll show you a couple slides here um, that I think very much speak to a risk off environment. This is banks relative to gold. We like to call it paper versus rock. This peaked all the way back at the start of the year. The most recent rally could not make a new high. This has made a new three-month low uh, over the last several days. So banks versus gold continue, I think, to suggest risk off. Very similar here, S&P relative to gold. We had a 15% rally in the S&P, yet stocks broadly made no progress versus gold. What is the message there? When we look to hard assets outperforming financial assets, I think it's reflective of a big change of investor psychology and risk behavior. And, you know, a very long-term look at this, this is all the way back to 2011, banks versus gold. When liquidity was ample, financial assets outperform. When liquidity contracts, hard assets outperform. So I think this is the beginning of a really important shift just in terms of what investors prefer. Uh, and then lastly, um, just to go to our last chart here, it, 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 it wouldn't be a problem if Citi wasn't involved. And I, I think it's hard to even imagine Citigroup is below its 2008-2009 relative price low versus the S&P. So if you bought Citi all the way at the lows back in 2009, you actually have lost money versus the S&P. So I think it's a concerning set of charts when we think about what the message is with the banks right now. All right, Chris, thank you. Thank you. Chris Verone of Strategus. Um, today, obviously, we got a lot of warnings from big bank CEOs. We heard from Jamie <laughs> Dimon at the Business Roundtable on Squawk Box this morning. We heard from Brian Moynihan. We heard from David Solomon. Um, Julie, where do you stand on financials? You know, I think financials are really hard because it's hard to create true differentiation when you're a bank, right? I, like, like, I go to First Republic because they have cookies, and that's kind of all I can tell the difference between. Love that. I mean, the, what kind of cookies? They're chocolate chip. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and TD's Sorry. got the pen. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. And lollipops. Yeah, okay. But I mean, that's the level of differentiation between the financial institutions, banks in particular, is really difficult. And you're seeing deterioration in the regionals. You're seeing deterioration among consumer finance. And I think you're just, that's indication that the consumer just isn't as strong as we would like. And that's going to ripple through. So, in addition to being a sector that doesn't have a lot of differentiation, I do think it has exposure to reducing credit quality. And so it's not one that we're particularly interested in. I mean, Jamie Dimon's comment were pretty interesting this morning. And I know Karen was watching very closely. Um, but basically, he said $1.5 trillion households have saved, but that's going to run out in the middle of next year or so. So all those savings, they're being eaten away because of inflation, and that's troubling for the consumer. We've brought it up before. Yeah. You know, everybody wants to point to the consumer's balance sheet. The flip side of that coin is consumer debt now is either side of $5 trillion in this country, which is a historic number, and credit card debt now north of a trillion. I mean, the numbers continue to sort of add up against that. So $1.5 trillion, yes, in and of itself, it's a huge number compared to what the debt numbers are, not so much. City. 
Chris brought it up, like uh, because it's always a poster child when there's Look, trouble when there's trouble within, somewhere, you can be sure right. cities yeah. involved. And and whether it was the financial crisis and whether it was disparate parts of the world, I mean, they're given credit for having a global business. They're given credit for being the ones that are probably most at risk. I was actually selling some upside calls in the city a couple weeks ago, um, looking out to that uh, January February period where we we've been talking about markets with this range of where we expect you know after a nice rally going into year end, there will be a bit of a comeuppance. And I think people are starting to price that in for banks. Remember, banks sold off a aggressively. Then they outperformed from August through to this last run until this pullback because, in fact, people realized there really hasn't been that credit moment. And I think that's what we, we, we sold them first.